Hi everybody, I'm here at the park today, and let me be the first to say that I love watching these exotic critters roam free here in the park. Because I love the park! In fact, I come to the park at least twice a year because of it, and every time I do, I take this giant poster and my dear friend Bobo the Baboon along with me. <laughs> The idea of taking a dangerous animal home from the zoo and then living with them is an idea that I love. It builds character and teaches fear, both vital skills in the everyday world. So uh, today's, uh, today's topic is Pokemon and house pets. Pokemon are pretty cool. There's at least 20 of them, and with the new game that just released, another batch of these goons are going to spread across the world faster than... I don't know, leukemia? Basically, every Pokemon game has a few houses where there's just a Pokemon eating out of a dog bowl or something. They have a similar role to common house pets. There's even some ads that have Pokemon living in houses. So I thought, what if every single Pokemon got that chance? And that is the very specific ranking made for today at this moment currently right now. Because I loathe myself, I went through 1,000 fictional animals in this ranking just to tell you which ones are least likely to cause property damage and or lawsuits. The only major rule I want to add is that a majority of these placements ignored the move list that can be taught to the Pokemon and instead followed primarily the Pokedex entries. This decision will make sense much later on. And starting with Tier 1, good swell jolly and pleasant times only. Here's where most of the normal types and small animals, not terribly threatening, tend to be. Many of the dangerous attacks they might possess are again being ignored because of the move list thing, and I wanted to put like 200 of these guys here just so we could get to the interesting stuff a bit faster. Though some of these choices could be questionable due just to their sizes. Just pretend that they fit, I don't care. And now I'm gonna talk for a while, because this giant list took me like an hour to make. So while you look at it, here's a fun fact. Did you know that the moon dust on the moon is an allergen? At least two people exposed to it showed an allergic reaction. But the sample size is too small to indicate how common this allergy could be to the general population. It's entirely possible that it could be an extremely common allergy or a rare one, but we might not know in our lifetime. I hope you found this as interesting as I did. For animal standards, some of these guys might not be your greatest options. Like one of these is literally just the soul of a dead child, and then there's Clavopus, which is canonically as intelligent as a three-year-old. But for Pokemon standards, it's commonplace for fourth graders to catch living rocks and gods. A lot of these guys aren't too bad, especially in comparison with some of the later ones, because at worst, these guys are going to be destroying my furniture rather than my bones and vital organs. And now we can move on to tier two. Yeah, yeah, that's probably fine. From this point, it's safe to say that these guys should have a little bit more care taken with them. Virtually any animal that isn't a common cat, dog, bird, or in the previous bunch should be taken with greater care. Even one wrong move can endanger yourself or others. So, uh, here, here's like a couple hundred more Pokemon. Some of them need like a large body of water or a large-ish yard to roam around. Otherwise, it should be fine. I'm gonna talk about some of the more interesting ones now, such as can jump really high, probably gonna wreck your carpet. Just a little guy, likes to scare children, an actual pinecone, land snake, possibly venomous creature, nice bird that likes to steal things and can produce explosives, equivalent to a bonsai buddy, can crush rocks larger than itself, so that's cool, its heart stops if it stops jumping, 20 foot long fish but it seems nice, eats depression, needs to live in a ranch, runs away from conflict, very popular in ski resorts when it comes to snow production, zebra, its kicks shatter concrete, can dig through bedrock, needs solar energy to live, ultrasound shatters boulders, fancy owl, this one just looks gross. Only a few of them so they don't get the scary big form. I would rather eat these ones if I'm being honest. Ugly horse, horse that weighs four times that of a regular horse. Mushroom, it would probably be killed by a bird or something if we're being honest. Literally never stops sleeping, it hates people. Take it from a person who's great with exotic animals just like these past 400-ish guys. All ownership problems can be solved, little TLC. Again, keep a keen eye on any of these universally, and only good times will come ahead, I think, I hope, possibly, maybe. After this, we have Tier 3. I mean, I wouldn't. They don't have enough going wrong with them to make them an extreme liability and therefore higher, but too much to be left alone with your kitchen appliances and therefore lower. Starting off, every bug type. Just all of them, all of them besides, like, these four deserve to be here. These ones get a pass because I like them, they're my favorites, and they look very polite. Also, every humanoid. Hopefully you know what I mean when I say I don't want a five to six foot tall creature on two legs considered a house pet. These guys aren't house pets, they are roommates. Also, we have the somewhat unfortunate presence of 
IQ of 5,000, capable of 10,000 horsepower, always depressed about its dead mom. Why is there a Pokemon themed around dead moms? You know damn well why Ditto is here. Hyper intelligent pink guy, alphabet soup, I hate Smoochum. That face looks like it is not allowed near school zones. Garbodors can make small black holes whenever. That's, that's not good. Moonrock, Sunrock, can produce ultrasound waves capable of launching humans. Its head can break boulders, it might actually break your drywall. Refuses to eat food. Can snap trees, also it has knife flippers. Confirmed to make people deaf in game. Is made of computer viruses and digital nonsense. I don't want computer viruses or digital nonsense. NOSE! Ew. Man. Cactus, what, what, what is... I don't even know how you pronounce that, if I'm being honest. Literally just depressed dead people. It's a living giant sentient cell, and that goo stuff is possibly toxic. I don't know if that should be in my house. Gears! That's that's literally just canonically an alien. I didn't, I didn't even know this was a Pokemon. That's that's a dandruff problem. Bird! Vulture! I actually didn't know this was a Pokemon either. Ew, ew. That too? Oh. Oh, dead person pumpkin. They look... They're, they're, I don't know about... Something about them bothers me. Crabominable. Canonically murders sleeping people. Dude, I've never played Sun and Moon. I don't know what this is, and I don't care. Living coal. Tends to eat animals on accident. Canonically is extremely tasty. I would rather eat it. Uh, what... Exactly what I said, but again. Is made of pure muscle for some reason. It's... That, I don't, I don't know how I feel about that. A dead person or spirit that wanted to be reborn as tea, I guess, for some reason. I don't, I don't know. Likes to be shitty and torments people. Humanoid, but looks like a pleasant old man and gives good advice. Zappy Urchin, Big Rock, all of the Galar fossils. Dracofish is slightly lower than the other three, but they they look like they're in pain at all times. And I I don't I don't know how I feel about that. And and you know what? Why not? How about just the rest of Gen 9? Anything I haven't mentioned or don't mention later on can go here. Wowee! Things are really starting to get bananas. From this point on, I would personally prefer not to mess with any of these fictional creatures I'm gonna talk about. Speaking of which, tier four. I mean, I wouldn't personally. It's the times where I saw a Pokemon and I said, I mean, I wouldn't. First off, every poison type. You know, venom, poison, ungood shenanigans like that. Because contrary to popular belief, corrosive substances aren't actually that exquisite and flavorful. Like, Trubbish, for example, is literally just trash, and it's not welcome near my bedroom. Blastoise only weighs about 190 pounds, but it has the ability to shoot water with such force that it can blow over parts of cars and other stuff like that. No. This one is- it, it is quite literally in the name. It's a B. And it's a drip. What, what, what else needs to be said? Choose on virtually anything with fangs, it's just big bad rats. If you saw the Detective Pikachu movie, you know that Psyduck's screams are extremely painful for anyone to hear. In other words, you are living with a duck bomb. I mean, Gastly is just like a little cloud guy. They don't, they don't seem too lovable. You look at Lickitung and you tell me you want to do your taxes around it. They're not terribly awful, but they love the electricity and that would actually murder your electricity bill. I mean, it's just like a big old dragonfish guy. I don't, I don't see that many problems with it. Fangs are strong enough to bite your limbs off. Aggressive danger knife hand bug. Literally just a pterodactyl. Ursaring is literally just a bear. Don't let children buy it during family functions. Depressed coral that also kills you. Also, just a lot of ghost types cursed for some reason. I don't, I don't really know. I, I guess it's because they're ghosts. Sword wings. Larvitars weigh around 500 pounds and love to eat soil. It would kill your backyard and nobody wants that. Pupitar just looks ugly if I'm being honest. Very toxic spores. The entire Mankey line and Slack Off all are here for the exact same problem. That being that they are insane crackhead animals and probably want to kill you and make you unalive. Wimsmers are capable of making screams that are 100 decibels loud. To give you an idea, that is roughly the same as an extremely loud chainsaw. Also, that would cause noise complaints. Nobody likes noise complaints. Bad touch cactus. Whiskashes can and will eat anything available to them. It's pretty bad, but it might be worse. The corpfish line wouldn't be too bad until you read that they are basically danger lobsters that, and I quote, are incredibly hard to raise, according to the Pokedex. Duskulls canonically kill naughty children. It is literally just anti-Santa. Dusclops have black hole mounts. It's basically Kirby. Glalie can freeze anything in seconds. No thanks! Huntail and Gorbis look gross and like those funny worms, respectively. Hyper-intelligent magnets. Cranidos line is known for its extremely low intelligence and can destroy stuff very easily. That is not good. 
In case anyone forgot, the Drifloon line canonically steals and very likely murders babies and small children by taking them to the sky, pretending that they are balloons, and, you know, that is a lawsuit waiting to happen. We don't want that. Generic Curse and Torment Ghost, we've seen it before, we will see it again. Spirit Tombs are rare Pokemon that require 108 bad souls to come together to make a single Pokemon. Do you see the problem with having 108 bad souls from bad living creatures that are now dead, all coming together and making a single Pokemon that you decide you want to love and cherish in your household. Carnivine casually causes Blizzard's big mammoth. Its favorite food is frozen souls. Drill hands can dig 90 miles per hour. They're just more dangerous crocodiles. I genuinely couldn't find anything too bad for Kafragus, but I see that face and I know I'm not in a safe place. It's living ice cream, it's cold, and it's gonna make a mess everywhere. Spiky grass rock. Axe teeth? Polar bear. Stunfish sucks. I, I don't know, it's a rock dragon, I guess? Knife babies, knife adult, knife grandfather. If its cloth wraps around someone, it drains the life of them. Also, their swords. Swirlix needs to eat 8 pounds of sugar a day. That is rather expensive for homeowner standards. It's probably made out of food, and honestly, just any living food is pretty gross. It's a baby T-Rex. A single playful bite can literally cut someone's arm off and or murder them. Murder pumpkins. Eware is known for shattering bones with its hugs. It also loves to hug. Nobody deserves Bruxish in their home. It looks like the inside of your mouth after you ate a bunch of sour Skittles at once. It's... Ew. Get this, it's a ghost type, and it curses you. Big scary flying metal bird that acts like a horse spits acid. Appleton is a very popular snack, and apparently children like to eat the chunks out of its back. Imagine having guests over, and you turned a corner only to see some children eating your dog. I already talked about humanoid Pokemon, but Obstagoons like heavy metal and being a bad influence, so they're just bad roommates. You might die if you touch that. That's... That's literally all my notes said, if I'm being honest. I'm trusting past Chupo on this. Touching Runigus apparently gives you bad memories, and that is bad, which is no good. These guys are literally just food, and that's that's gonna wreck your carpet. It's not even that's not even funny. Dogs that kill you if you play with them too much. Sit Titan, Danger Crab. And lastly, Ursulana. It's a bear, but again. Jeez Louise, there's almost as many Pokemon as I have fingers, and we still got a couple hundred to go. The last tier is tier five. Don't. We've gone through many unique fictional characters, but when it comes to these ones, don't. First off, every fire type, all of them. All of doesn't matter how much fire they can produce, and all all that stuff. Literally, just every fire type. No, don't, no, no go, no bad. Because in case you forgot, fire is flammable, and houses are flammable. And why would you keep an animal capable of? burning it down in your home. Why would you keep a flammable animal in your home? This is also why I didn't talk about the move lists of Pokemon, because a lot of non-fire types can learn fire type moves, and that would massively increase the size of this tier, so that is in fact the excuse I chose to go with. Every legendary, mythical, ultra beast, or anything in between automatically goes here. A majority of them are too powerful, or just actually are magical deities that are in this universe, so that isn't worth making an argument for around a hundred of them. Because once the government finds out you're owning any of them, they can and will track you down, and unfortunately, this isn't to say every Pokemon of this rarity deserves to be here, but I don't care. With that in mind, Groudon is arguably the worst Pokemon to keep as a house pet. It's big, a giant fire monster, and also capable of permanently altering the climate and drain the planet of water. Haunter and Gengar are fine normally, but their tongues have the ability to make people shake uncontrollably until they die. These guys are just... They're just bombs. Not too smart of a Pokemon line, they are strong enough to destroy skyscrapers. Like, Rhyferior is just a giant dangerous scary rock monster. Snorlax needs 880 pounds of food a day to be satisfied. If it's not food, it will eat virtually anything until it reaches that capacity minimum. Snorlax is going to eat your home and everything inside it. Shocked I haven't talked about this this much, but a lot of Pokemon in this world just are too large to be in an apartment or home. Its dex entry literally says it can knock down houses with its loud powers. It's a shark. It just eats souls out of bad habit. A shot from Klotzer's cannon can shoot a tainer down. That's a very big boat. Jaws
because of a Tyrantrum can demolish a car, also it's a T-Rex. Ghost sandcastles that are capable of killing anything they find on the sand. These things would probably be hunted down on beaches because how- wait, how is there even a civilization in the Pokemon universe with some of this? It, it doesn't make sense. Its bites go through steel rods, it can easily murder. These Pokemon are known for silencing people with negative emotions. That's code for they murder sad people. Easily crushes giant rocks, also it's a giant elephant. Please don't, don't, please do not, no, don't. And lastly, we have Cleaver. I mean, I mean, look at it. And with that, I have talked about what I've been researching the past month instead of going out on weekends. Like usual, if you disagree or want to correct me with something, make sure to open up with, Geez, Chupo, you really fibbed up, followed by whatever you want to say. Because we all make mistakes, and it's A-OK. -okay. I hope you enjoyed, and please make sure to take good care of your animals and pets at home. Just because a majority of these Pokemon aren't too safe, doesn't mean your parrot or cat or dog or whatever else you have isn't. You should take good care of the animals you have and love them deeply. You don't know how much time you have with them, but just make sure to keep a good eye on them. <laughs>